Yo, what is up? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial. This one's um, on a tape stop effect. I found a free VST that uh, I thought you guys might like and it might be useful. So links to everything below. Um, there is a free Massive patch if you have Massive, uh, which we will be using in this tutorial, but have no fear. If you don't have Massive, the source files will contain the, the bounced audio from the Massive patch. Um, if you do have Massive, the patch we're going to be using is free for download, obviously, but if you want to learn how to make it, there'll be a link below for that as well. And um, inside the source files, let's check it out, we'll have uh, the MIDI, and then the MIDI with no ends, and the MIDI full bounced audio, and then the sub, which is just a little extra for uh, the back of those drums. I'm not going to put up the drums because they're just pretty simple. If we go ahead and listen to them, this is what it sounds like, just the drums. So uh, it's important for the tutorials to have that little uh, blank space, because that's where the tape stop's going to happen. And this is the synth that we're going to use. And uh, what we're going to be focusing on is making this tape stop that happens right here. So let's listen. So that's pretty cool, and if we listen to them together, this is what we got. So that's pretty cool, right? Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. This first part's in Massive, so if you're just downloading the audio to follow along, you can skip the next couple of minutes. Anyway, this is the MIDI that's inside the source files, and um, you just drag that on a new MIDI track, and then put Massive on it and open up the Joshua Casper lead epicness, or you can go ahead and follow along in that last tutorial to figure out how to make it, but either way, make sure you have it, and this is what it sounds like. basic chord progression there and um, what I want to do is duplicate this right now duplicate and I want to get rid of um, some of these so this is where that the drums drop right here to the two notes before the three the two notes before the five uh, the two notes before the seven and the two notes before the nine or at the end and now it's just gonna have a little bit of audio drop there <laughs> And um, it's important to duplicate it because we're going to be using some of the fills there. Um, as you can see on the original MIDI, I've, I've done some, some other stuff there. So you don't have to, but you can. Um, and then I'm going to pull it over and I'm going to rename this just MIDI or uh, with no ends or something, whatever I call them in the source files. But I want to leave this area here because when I freeze this, while that's freezing, it's going to freeze the tail of the reverb here too. And that's important because um, if you're making a breakdown or something, you don't want the audio, audio just to abruptly stop. And you don't want to have to double up on the reverb um, here so you can get the tail. So always keep that tail. And this checkered box is where the reverb is. So the reverb will stop about here. And the reverb for this one goes a little bit longer. But now that that's done, I'm going to control T to create a new audio track and then I'm going to click here hold down control and drag down and look at what happened there isn't that sweet now it's saved my MIDI and it's given me the bounced audio real quick like you don't have to do that recording thing and this is just a lot nicer and a lot quicker so now that that's done I'm going to come in and create one more audio track and now I have to do some recording but this is where um, I'm gonna go ahead and solo this uh, if you don't see your ins and outs here, turn it on here, and 
I want to take the audio three audio, record it into here. I'm going to record, and I'm going to turn off the actual noise here or the velocity. Turn off the channel so it doesn't duplicate the sound on me. So it doesn't get really loud and obnoxious. But um, next thing you want to do is go download that tape stop. Uh, VST is right here. I'm going to drop it on there, and this is what it looks like. Pretty simple device, but uh, if we go ahead and play it, we'll see what it sounds like. It's pretty cool that it will it will tape start as well, but um, we're more focused on the tape start because that's the sound that's popular right now. And this little green line you can pull over and it will change how quickly it stops. So if I put it about here, it should stop fairly quickly. See that? But um, for what we're doing right now, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to look for it about 8%. 8 you see down here how it says down stop and I'm going to put it on about 8%. That's good. And I'm going to put that on, and now I'm going to record. And the good thing about the MIDI that we're using today is um, I'm going to use it in two spots. I'm going to use the tape stop here and the tape stop here. And the note just before it is the same on both, so I can and am going to just do it once and then copy and paste. But uh, obviously, if you're going for that you know, pro production, you're going to want to do it twice because, as you can see, the MIDI note itself is a little different and, um, you know, uh, making those little changes adds to the track. So, But for the tutorial, we're just going to do it here. So I'm going to let the audio play, and as soon as it hits this note, I'm going to hit the tape stop, and we're going to record into this next track the tape stop effect. So I'm going to hit record here, make sure I'm recording here, make sure I'm coming in from audio three, good to go, and I'm going to go ahead and play it. Cool. And now that that's done, um, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to take all the audio ahead of this, hit delete. I can unarm the track, control click to have them both soloed, and I'm going to get rid of this. I'm actually just going to get rid of this part. I'm going to keep this run up. I don't know what just happened. So I'm going to delete this tape stop because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to pull this back over here. And I'm going to pull this over. I'm going to keep the runoff here because I think it adds a little bit of flavor to it. But uh, you don't have to. And I'm going to delete this part right here. Um, another thing is too, you got to make sure, see how the MIDI comes in a little bit early? Uh, that just adds that human type feel to it. So um, we're going to pull that over and make sure it comes in early there too. So this should be good to go, yeah. And uh, we're going to duplicate that like I said. We're going to bring it over here, control, duplicate. Get rid of this, and again come in and bring over this to make sure it happens. So if we listen to what we have now, and let's go ahead and loop it, and let's see what we got. So there we go. And all of that tape stop stuff is what you're going to want to do, obviously, for following along with the uh, source files. But anyway, um, I've got these two f to fill in right now. And what I'm going to do is actually, for this part, I'm going to take this and bring it over and double click. And I'm going to hit reverse. And that looks pretty good. But what I'm going to do is bring this over like this, bring it over like this. Let's see what that sounds like. That's pretty sweet, right? But actually, I want to, let's try this. I forgot where I used it on that uh, example. I think maybe I just um, took it over like this. But this is part of the game, right? When you're doing some edits like this, is just finding that sweet spot. Let's try 
play it all the way like this. That's pretty good. But uh, what I, I'm going to do here is highlight just the tail there, and I'm going to pull it up. That's pretty cool. Um, and then another thing I did here for this right before the five is I came in, um, which would be right about here, control C to duplicate it or copy it and then control V to paste it here. And I just kind of made some quick edits like this. this over and I'm just taking the tail of the reverb just to add to it like this and see what that sounds like and this is not how I did the, the original one but we're just playing around with it it gives it that little sound. Um, if I come into where I did it before, this is this is the actual cut that I made here. Um, but I don't know. Those are kind of the same, right? A little bit. Something like that. But uh, as you can see, I just took it and made it a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to take it. You know what? There we go. <laughs> Oops. Let's see what that sounds like now. We'll just run that whole loop. I apologize for kind of rambling on, taking a long time. Volume's a little bit higher here, so I just select them and bring it down. So that's cool. And now if we run that with the drums that we had before, I'm going to turn off the old synths here and just leave this original thing on. And turn this on, turn that off. And let's see if it sounds cool. done it. We've done what I set out to do, which is teach you this tape stop part, and we spent about two seconds on that, and about the rest of the ten minutes talking about these edits right here. But that, uh, I hope you learned some things, and I hope that helped you out, and obviously go get the source files, rate, subscribe, comment, I always forget to say that, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace.